Welcome back to Trinidad and Tobago. And while I'm telling you have some sunshine, there are many persons who will not be too happy to leave. In fact, there were warnings that have been issued uh, advising those who fall into the vulnerable category, that is those who are susceptible to respiratory ailments, to please be cautious. If you go outside yesterday or you went outside yesterday, the atmosphere seemed so hazy and almost overcast. But in the end, what it was was actually Sahara dust. This is not a phenomenon that is isolated. I looked at the U.S. News this morning, and they were also talking about what's taking place and young people looking at what's happening and speaking about all of the next generation and how they're handling it. Well, Colleen is here to tell us what's happening and why is it so particularly bad. Colleen, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Hima. Hey, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm well, thank you. We do appreciate you getting up very early this morning to share some insight with us. So tell me a little bit. It's Sahara dust. I, you know, you would have noticed the over, overcast clouds yesterday. You couldn't see the hills. Everyone was commenting on it. But it was not overcast in terms of, of rain or expecting rain. Why was it so bad and what's happening? So yesterday's Sahara dust event was for a lack of a better word, unprecedented for Trinidad and Tobago. Um, we see Saharan dust, it's a year-round event in Trinidad. But between April and November, we tend to see these more severe surges. But yesterday's surge was particularly severe. So that was because on June 10th to 11th, a uh, really thick surge of Saharan dust moved off the African coast and models did pick up on how bad it was going to be. So we expected to see unhealthy levels of Saharan dust moving across Trinidad and Tobago to very unhealthy levels. So that would start affecting the general population, not just the sensitive groups such as myself. Um, but we saw on Friday how bad it, it was, but when we saw that air quality got to unhealthy levels on Friday, and we knew that a more severe surge was coming on Sunday, we knew that it was going to be pretty bad. And for the first time on Sunday, air quality levels across Tobago reached hazardous levels. And at that level, the entire population would begin to experience health effects. So not just the sensitive groups, which include the elderly, children, teenagers, and those, those with heart and respiratory ailments. Um, and then across Trinidad, uh, the air quality actually reached levels that were very unhealthy for the population. So the air quality index is an index that was that's created using particulate matter. So with Saharan dust, we have particulate matter that are 2.5 microns, which are really dangerous, and then you have particulate matter that's 10 microns. The air quality index also captures particulates that include ozone, uh, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and um, one more <laughs> um, but the air quality index we use to track the har dust really include that pm 2.5 and pm 10 and those values reached levels that for the eme was unprecedented now note that they've only been tracking this since 2015 i've only been th tracking it for three years but scientists who have been tracking Saharan dust events for the last 50 years say that this was the most severe Saharan dust event to enter the Caribbean region since they've been tracking it using remote sensing technology. So it really, really was an unprecedented event across Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, we saw visibilities in Trinidad reach below, I think uh, the Met Office who makes the um, observations for visibility at Piaco, it at the lowest point, 700 meters, that was how far away you were able to see. In Tobago, it was a bit better at three kilometers, I believe, was the lowest it reached yesterday. Now, we did see some thunderstorms that moved across the area over, well, yesterday evening across both Trinidad and Tobago, which markedly improved air quality and visibility across both islands. And that's due to a very weak tropical wave that's now moved across Trinidad. And if you're waking up this morning to some light rain, that tropical wave is still affecting us, but we're going to see another surge, not as severe as yesterday, move across Trinidad later this evening. So right now, the air quality levels across Trinidad are moderate and visibility at nine kilometers. Across Tobago, it's still unhealthy for sensitive groups, so continue taking those precautions, and it's also at nine kilometers. Now, you know, when you talk about this, uh, today it's going to get better. Will it last, uh, if yesterday was unprecedented, 
Uh, will we see that level occurring any other time for the week? Are we going to say, okay, the worst is now over? Yeah, the worst is now over when it comes to that level of dust. Um, but Saharan dust is going to stick around through the week. Um, we're going to see this surge that comes in to this evening into tomorrow. That's going to bring levels back up to that unhealthy level, possibly across Trinidad and Tobago. And then it's really going to fluctuate through the week. We have another tropical wave coming on Thursday, and that's going to markedly improve air quality. We may even see it reach to the good levels for the first time since uh, pretty much Saturday. And then um, another surge of dust will come in on Friday. But these surges of dust would be more typical for what we've seen throughout the year, where we see the air quality levels drop to moderate to unhealthy to sensitive groups. So it's really the sensitive groups continue need to need to continue taking those precautions but the general population really shouldn't be affected the way that we were affected yesterday the reduced visibility was insane um i i went out yesterday i was looking for stuff for father's day and even when i got to grand bazaar that's only when i was able to see the northern rain so really wow. that visibility was really really low yesterday I also saw you mention the rainfall that uh, this morning there seemed to have been just a burst of rain. I don't know if it's uh, settling down, but you know, a lot of people, because the beaches and the rivers and everything is open for a little more outdoor activities, uh, we're having group sports or team sports being allowed now. What can you tell those who are excited to be back outdoors? So if you fall into that sensitive category, definitely just walk with your uh, medication that you would use, your allergy medication, your inhaler, that kind of thing. Um, for those that are heading to the beaches, though, particular warning to you. Uh, winds picked up overnight, so seas right now are still agitated. So we, if you're going into the open waters, it'll be up to three meters in sheltered areas. It'll be below a meter and choppy. So just pay particular attention to when you're swimming for rip currents, all that stuff. Um, but today, the weather should markedly improve. We have a little bit of light rain going on this morning. That should uh, give way to mostly sunny and hazy conditions throughout the day. So enjoy the outdoors. Well, definitely something we can look forward to. So maybe after my shift, I can probably make it to like the rest of Trinidad and Tobago. I'm sure everyone is going to end up somewhere uh, today. McLean, thank you so much uh, for that update today and also for the advice, uh, much needed advice there being given out to the population. We take a short break. When we come back, we're going to dive straight into the boss report. Astro did tell us that today they're analyzing the media review in detail. And then today with us also, we have Karen Nunes to share a very packed show. Uh, so much to discuss and also we'll introduce you to one of the UNC's newest faces, Aloy Hunt.